Hi guys, it's Ashraf from WizEdu and today we're going to be going through reduction formula. So in trigonometry, I like to think of any angle that's greater than 90 degrees as being ugly. And any ugly angle must be reduced into a smaller and more pretty angle, okay? And how do we go about making these ugly angles pretty? Well, basically we make use of supplementary and complementary reduction formula to turn these ugly angles which are greater than 90 degrees into pretty angles which are smaller than 90 degrees okay so what exactly are supplementary and complementary angles well supple supplementary angles are the angles 180 degrees and 360 degrees whereas complementary angles are 90 degrees and 270 degrees. So what do supple supplementary angles help us to do? Well, basically, they help us to create machines in each of the four quadrants that allow us to turn our ugly angles into pretty angles. So we have 180 here on the left and 360 here on the right, okay? And let's consider the second quadrant. Any angle in the second quadrant would be less than 180 degrees, okay? So our machine for the second quadrant would be 180 minus theta because it's 180 pull back, okay? In the third quadrant, it would be, the angle would be greater than 180 degrees because it's 180 push forward. In the fourth quadrant, the fourth quadrant lies next to this 360. So any angle in the fourth quadrant would be less than 360 degrees. So it would be 360 pull back. And in the first quadrant, an angle would be 360 push forward or 360 plus theta. So the memory technique I like to use for supplementary angles is S for supplementary, S for same, and this will link with the met method later on, okay? So our method for making ugly angles pretty using supplementary reduction formula. Okay, so step one, find the quadrant the ugly angle lives in. So basically you look at your angle and ascertain which quadrant it lies in. Step two, you'll express the ugly angle using the machine found in that quadrant. So for example, let's say the angle was 150 degrees. We'd express it in terms of the machine found in the second quadrant. So in the second quadrant, it's 180 pull back, 180 minus theta. So we'd express 150 in terms of this machine. So 150 could be written as 180 minus 30 degrees because that's still equal to 150, okay? S for supplementary, S for same. And I'll show you guys what this means when we do some examples. So basically what that means is we drop the 180 and just keep the 30. For the sign, check which quadrant the ugly angle lived in, not the pretty angle. So you always go back to the original to check for your sign, your positive or your negative. So let's do a few examples. Let's say we wanted to reduce this ugly angle sign 150 because 150 is greater than 90. So step one, ascertain which quadrant 150 lies in. Well, 150 is in quadrant two because it's between 90 and 180. So step two would be to find the appropriate machine to use to reduce 150. Well, we're in the second quadrant, so we'd use 180 pull backwards or 180 minus theta. So we'd express 150 in terms of 180. So that would be sine 180 minus 30. 180 minus 30 is 150, so B 
these two lines are the same. That's why there's an equal sign. Okay, so step three would be S for supplementary, S for same. Our trig function remains sign, it's the same. And this allows us to cancel off the 180 and bring down 30 degrees. And now step four, we have to check for our sign. We check the original sign 150. We said that was in the second quadrant and we know that sign is positive in the second quadrant because of the cast rule. So our final answer is also positive and we could further simplify this to positive half with our special angles if we wanted to. So our next example is sine 210 degrees. So step one, look which quadrant 210 lies in. Well, 210 is going to be in quadrant three because it's between 180 and 270. So step two would be to find the machine in quadrant three. That's going to be 180 push forward. So 180 plus theta. So we'd express sine 210 in terms of 180 by doing 180 plus something. So sine 210 is exactly the same as sine 180 plus 30 degrees. So step three, S for supplementary, S for same. We keep our trig function the same, it remains sine. And this allows us to cancel off the 180 here and to just pull down our 30 degrees. Step four, we check for the sign of the, we check for the, whether the final answer is positive or negative, check for its sign by looking at the original. So the original was sine 210. We said that was in the third quadrant, but we know sine is only positive in quadrants one and two because of the cast rule. So sine 210 must be negative because it's in quadrant three. So our final answer is negative sine 30 degrees. And we could further simplify this as negative a half if we wanted to. For our next example, we're given cos 250 degrees. So we'll follow the same steps as we did before. Step one, check which quadrant 250 lies in. Well, 250 is in quadrant three because it's between 180 and 270. So step two would be to find what machine we're going to use to make this ugly angle pretty. Well, we're in quadrant three and we're using supplementary angles. So it would be 180 push forward or 180 plus theta, right? So we'd express 250 in terms of 180. That's going to be 180 plus 70 degrees. And now step three, S for supplementary, S for same. We retain cos as our trig function. We keep it the same. This allows us to cancel off the 180 and just bring down 70. So our answer is cos 70 degrees. And never forget step four to check whether it's positive or negative. So we look at our original cos 250. We said that was in the third quadrant, but cos is only positive in quadrant one and quadrant four because of the cast rule. So our final answer must be negative because cos 250 is in the third quadrant and cos is negative in the third quadrant. So our final answer is negative. So cos 291 degrees. We'll start with step one. Okay, that's to look at which quadrant 291 lies in. That's going to be in quadrant four because 291 is between 270 and 360. Step two, which machine are we going to use? Well, we're in the fourth quadrant, so that's next to 360. So it'll be 360 pull backwards or 360 minus theta. So we'll express cos 91 in terms of 360. That's going to be cos 360 minus 69 degrees. Step three, S for supplementary, S for same. Our trig function remains the same, and this allows us, because you can see we have the supplementary angle here, so it remains cos. We can cancel off our 360 
and bring down our 69 degrees. And we will remember to do step four, which is to check our sign. So cos 291 is in the fourth quadrant and cos is positive in the fourth quadrant because of the cast rule. So our final answer will also be positive. If we had 10, 382 degrees, what would we do? Well, the same as the previous examples, we just follow the method. Step one, 382 is in the first quadrant because it's after 360 degrees, because it's greater than 360. Step two, what machine would we use? Well, it's 360 push forward. So if you wanted to rewrite it in terms of 360, it would be 360 plus something. So we'd say 10, 360 plus 22 degrees. Step three, S for supplementary, S for same. Our trig function remains 10 and we can cancel off our 360 and we have 10, 22 degrees. For step four, we check our sign. 10 382 degrees that's in the first quadrant and all our trig ratios are positive in the first quadrant so our final answer is positive 10 22 degrees for our final example we're given 10 120 degrees so follow the steps as before step one which quadrant are we in we are in quadrant 2 because 120 is between 90 and 180. Step 2, what machine are we going to use in the second quadrant? Well, we have our 180 here, so it's 180 pull backwards, right? So it's 180 minus theta. So we're going to express 10 in terms of 180. We're going to say 10, 120 is the same as 180 minus 60 degrees step 3 s for supplementary s for same we keep our trig function as 10 because we have the supplementary angle 180 here we can cross that off and just bring down our 60 degrees and for our final step we look at the sign now our original 10 120 degrees was in the second quadrant but tan is only positive in 1 and 3 because of the cast rule. So it must be negative in quadrant 2. So tan 120 is negative. So our final answer will also be negative. We could further simplify this if we wanted to, to negative root 3 using our special angles. So now we go on to complementary reduction formula. We've just done supplementary reduction formula and we've just shown how that's able, that allows us to make ugly angles pretty. So you might be thinking, then why do we need something else when we have something already that works? Well, basically, complementary reduction formula allows us to do something else. It also allows us to switch between trig functions. So what that means is I can switch between my complementary functions. I can turn cos into sine and vice versa and tan into cot and vice versa. And this is especially useful when we're doing trig identities and trig equations as it allows us to manipulate equations to solve these questions. So earlier we said that our complementary angles were 90 degrees and 270 degrees. So now if we had to look in each quadrant what our machines would be to allow us to make our ugly angles pretty, um, let's take for example the first quadrant. Let's look at the first quadrant first. In the first quadrant all our angles are going to be less than 90 degrees. So our machine for the first quadrant would be 90 degrees minus theta because it's 90 pull backwards. In the second quadrant, the angles would be greater than 90 degrees, so it would be 90 push forward. In the third quadrant, it would be 270 pull backwards, 
So 270 minus theta. And the fourth quadrant would be 270 plus theta. Okay? So the method we're going to be using for complementary reduction formula is largely the same as what we used when we did supplementary reduction formula. There's just one difference. We're going to be using co-functions. So co for complementary, co for co-function. So you can see we have two nice memory techniques. If you're using supplementary reduction formula, it's S for supplementary, S for same. Our trig function remains the same. But if we're using complementary reduction formula, it's co for complementary, co for co-function. So let's take a look at our method. So step one is the same. We'll find the quadrant our angle greater than 90 degrees is in. Then we'll express that angle using the machine found in that quadrant. So if we had to look at our quadrants for complementary reduction formula, our machines are 90 minus theta because this is 90 pull backwards. In the second quadrant, it was 90 push forward, so 90 plus something. In the third quadrant, it's 270 pull backwards, so 270 minus theta. In the fourth quadrant, 270 push forwards, so 270 plus theta. Now, our third step is where things change. Co for complementary, co for co-function. What we basically mean by this is if your original was sine theta, you're eventually going to have to change that to its co-function cos theta and vice versa. While the theta won't remain the same, you'd have to use one of your machines to change the theta. Our last step for the sine, we have to check the original. So we always check the original function if it was positive or negative in the quadrant it was in, and we assign that to the final answer. So for example, we were given sine 30 degrees, and we wanted to use a co-function to change sine into cos. Okay, what would we do? Well, step one, we check which quadrant 30 degrees lies in. 30 degrees lies in the first quadrant. So step two, our machine for the first quadrant is 90 minus theta because it's 90 pull backwards. So we express sine 30 in terms of this. So it would be 90 minus 60 degrees. Step three was co for complementary, co for co-function. So sine will now change into cos. We can cross out our 90 degrees and pull down our angle, that's 60. And for the sine, we check the original. Our original was sine 30 degrees. And sine 30 is in the first quadrant, and all our functions are positive in the first quadrant. So our final answer is positive cos 60 degrees, or if you want to further simplify it, half. Our next example, we're given sine 120 degrees. So step one, check which quadrant the angle lies in. 120 lies in the second quadrant because it's between 90 and 180. Step two, we'll find the machine in that quadrant. So in this case, it would be 90 push forward. So 90 plus theta. So we express our 120 in terms of 90 plus theta. So sine 120 is the same as sine 90 plus 30. Okay. And now step three, our co for complementary, co for co function. So we'll no longer use sine. We're going to be using cos because we have this 90 here. We're only allowed to cross out the 90 if we've brought down the cos here and we bring down our 30 degrees and now for our original we check where if sine 120 was positive where it was. So sine 120 is in the second quadrant 
and we know that because of the cast rule sine is positive in the second quadrant so our final answer is positive cos 30 degrees or positive root 3 over 2. For our next example we're given cos 150 degrees so step one is to check which quadrant cos 150 is in. Cos 150 is also in the second quadrant because it's between 90 and 180. Step two, find the machine in that quadrant. Quadrant two is 90, push forward. So 90 plus theta. So cos 150 expressed in terms of 90 plus theta would be 90 plus 60 degrees. And now for our third step, co for complementary, co for co function. Because in order to cancel this 90 over here, we have to switch our trig function to sine because it's co for complementary, co for co function. Now we're allowed to cross our 90 out and bring down our 60 degrees. Now for our sine, we check the original. Now cos 150 degrees. We said that's in the second quadrant. So cos in the second quadrant. Cos is negative in the second quadrant because it's only positive in quadrants 1 and 4 because of the cast rule. So our final answer is going to be negative because cos 150 is negative. So if we want to further simplify that, that would be negative root 3 over 2. So for, so for the next example, we're given tan 120 degrees. Step 1, which quadrant does 120 lie in? Well, that's also going to be in the second quadrant because it's between 90 and 180. Our second step, what machine are we going to use? That's going to be 90 push forward, so 90 plus something, 90 plus theta. So we can re-express tan in terms of that. That's going to be 90 plus 30 degrees. Okay. And now step three, co for complementary, co for co function. Now the co function of tan is cot. So in this case, we're replacing tan with cot. We can cancel out our 90 and bring in our 30 degrees. Okay. But now we have to look at our original for step 4, tan 120. We said tan 120, 120 is in the second quadrant. But tan is only positive in quadrants 1 and quadrants 3 because of the cast rule. So tan would be negative in the second quadrant. So our final answer is going to be negative cot 30 degrees. For our next example, we're given tan 245 degrees. So tan 245, step 1, which quadrant is 245 in? Well, 245 degrees is going to be in our third quadrant because it's between 180 and 270. So now we're going to be using a different machine. For step 2, if we look at the third quadrant, it's going to be 270 pull backwards or 270 minus theta. So we have to re-express tan in terms of 270 minus something. So that's going to be tan 270 minus 25 degrees. Okay, and now third step, co for complementary, co for co function. The co function of tan is cot. Now we allow to cancel out 270 because we changed our co functions. We've changed our trig function. We can bring down our 25 degrees. And for our fourth step, we check the original. Now tan 245 degrees, we've already established that it lies in the third quadrant. And we know that tan is positive in the third quadrant because of the cast rule. So cot 25 degrees is also going to be positive. For our final example, we're given sine 300 degrees. 
Step 1. Which quadrant does 300 degrees lie in? Well, it lies in the fourth quadrant because it's between 270 and 360. So, step 2. What's our machine in the fourth quadrant? Well, because we're dealing with complementary angles, it's going to be 270 push forward. So 270 plus theta. Okay? So we'll express sine 300 in terms of 270 plus. That's going to be sine 270 plus 30 degrees. Our next step is co for complementary, co for co function. The sine will then become cos because it's a co function of sine. And we can cross out our 270 and bring down our 30. For step 4, we check the sine from our original. The sine 300 degrees. We said that's in the fourth quadrant. But sine is only positive in quadrants 1 and 2 because of the cast rule. So it must be negative in the fourth quadrant. So our final answer is going to be negative because sine 300 is negative. So it's negative cos 30 degrees.